I'm Stephanie Brejo from the LA Times food team. I am here with Courtney Storer, the culinary supervisor, producer, chef extraordinaire <laughs> from The Bear, the hit TV show on FX. And today we are going to learn how to make a true Italian beef sandwich. In today's beef, we're going to use chuck. But in the past, I've used top round, top sirloin roasts. Just remember that with different cuts of meat, different prices, so whatever budget you're on, you can make an Italian beef. We also have to have our fundamentals, which is our bread. We have Toronto bread today. Very important component yes. for the Italian beef specifically. Very, very Toronto bread. And then I have some giardinera. We have all of our things to make the giardinera, some onion that I like to roast the beef in, some garlic, and then our spices. I like a foundation for the beef to be onion powder, garlic powder. I have dried basil, dried oregano, um, a little bit of celery seed. I use a little bit of paprika garlic blend and then some chili flake, which isn't on here, and beef stock. Can I smell this? Is that yeah, gonna be, smell is it. Is that be weird if I smell this? No. <laughs> oh my God, it smells, smells so good. <laughs> we get our heat on mm -hmm. and we're gonna get our pan nice and hot. Now, browning the Italian beef, you can do it or you can skip this part entirely. It'll still come out really nice. I go ahead and give it a good amount of salt, make it rain, you know, and pepper, a good amount of pepper. So I flipped my board over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and get an onion ready. But we kind of just quarter it. And then we're gonna peel all the sides. Here, grab an apron, you come on in. You come on in, we do this together, teamwork. All right, sounds good. So a whole head of garlic and just chop it in half. Should I wear this hat too? Should Is it a Cubs hat? It's a cu I mean, I, I am gonna say I am definitively team <laughs> team Dodgers, but like, I'll, you know. Today you're a Cubs Today fan. Today I'm a Cubs fan. But All also right, controversial for Chicago wins. That's a whole nother thing. Oh my God, That's I can't, I show. don't even, I can't. It's a whole okay. other show. We got the beef. We're gonna put it in the heat because our oil's nice and hot. Um, I turn the heat down a little bit and we're gonna let it caramelize. Mm -hmm. Something that I always tell people when they're cooking stuff at home mm -hmm. is when we are tasting meat and, and we feel it and we're like, okay, that's rare and you know how they show chefs and they do the pinch Right, the, your sure. hand. Until you feel really more, more comfortable with that, it's okay to use a meat thermometer. We want to cook it in the oven until it's about 125. Ready, ready? Ready, go. Teamwork. Okay. Oh my in God. We go. In we go. <laughs> in she goes. Perfect. Et voila. voila. This is my baby. <laughs> this is a dream of mine to have a slicer. We got our beef. I'm gonna put it in to cook it. And then I'm gonna add in my homemade beef stock here. I like to use oxtail bone or mm -hmm. any sort of beef bone that you can slow roast, and then I kind of add that with a bunch of water, carrot, onion, celery, garlic. Mm -hmm. So look at how that beef is gonna change. Yeah, you can see it cooking already a little bit. It's absorbing yeah. the sauce. Yeah. It's glossy, Oh, look, gorgeous. But I'm not turning that heat up too much, right? Mm -hmm. When you make your jardinera on your own, it does have a different texture, um, but the steps to making it can be a little bit more, it takes, it takes more time. So just be prepared. The way I make it is I cut down all these vegetables um, and I, I like to use a lot of fennel, which is different in my jardinera. I like carrot, I like celery, and then I like cauliflower. Serrano peppers as well. You can kind of see them in here or you can use jalapenos. I use serranos. Depending on the time of year, you just want to be careful because they can get really, really spicy mm -hmm. and then your jardinera can go crazy. When I talk about using vinegar, when you're making something like jardinera, I like to heat up the vinegar, mm -hmm. boil it with all the aromatics. Pour it over the veg and then add oil to preserve. It's like a little like pickling. Yeah, you know? it's, it's like, like a, a pickling thing. It's a whole different episode. Yeah. <laughs> That's episode two. Yeah. This is a perfect size, I think. Let's Great. do three of these for us. Perfect. And while that beef is cu cooking, we're gonna go ahead. This bread is not pre-sliced, mm -hmm. so I add a little cut in there. And it's gotta be hinged. Yeah, I this, what, hinged? Oh, like yeah, hinged. <laughs> I'm like, what? what? You're like a new cooking term? Oh no. my god, yes, you just taught me something. Hinged. Absolutely not. 
It has to be hinged. Don't skip the hinge. Then go and get our bread out. But do you feel how hot? Be careful, don't burn yourself. Oh yeah, and you can, can you hear yeah. it? Remember in the show, he's like, yeah, it's just too crumbly, it's yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, and that's in yeah. the show, of course. That's crumbly, it's too dense. Put it by hand. Yeah, it's the mixer. It's not the mixer, all right? It's crumbly, the oven's too dry. You need to fill a baking sheet with water, put it on the oven floor, throw in another batch, okay? okay. I'll do my just job. do it. Midwesterners are very nice people, but if you if you <laughs> with their beef, you you out of here. Yeah, you're out of here. Don't with their beef. <laughs> I know that's what I was nervous about with the show. I'm like, oh man, everyone's gonna be so mad. <laughs> you know. Sometimes as chefs, we get in our heads. Everything has to be perfect, mm -hmm. and sometimes the best things that happen are from the imperfect. Yeah. And I think hopefully Carmi learns that. <laughs> was it hard for you as a chef coming from sort of a traditional restaurant background yeah. to then uh, create this entire world where it is so built around those stressors? Was it sort of difficult no, for I you to it. dive back into it? You no, loved I it. mean, I it was difficult. Like there were especially episodes where I was like, oof, like episode seven. Right. The one -er, like the intensity, the DoorDash, the mm -hmm. tablet. Like I've lived that time and time and time again. Um, and you know, just like kind of going through my old no notebooks and seeing my stream of just like jotting things down that are wild. Like at one point I said like action items and I'm like, what? <laughs> where? Action. Who talks yeah, like this? Who's, yeah, but like you know, you just kind of get tunnel vision, uh -huh. and so yeah, definitely there were times that were hard, it was hard. Yeah, and I was also like, is this going to be so hard for chefs to watch? Like, and for some people it is, but yeah. you know, there's also the the beauty of everyone coming together, even though they're all kind of crazy sometimes. This is the one time you listen to me, please do not touch that. That's been going for 12 hours, okay? That's my pot, Jeff. Everybody knows. That's her pot. That's all right. pot. Use another pot, please, chef. Pot. All right. Corner. <laughs> All right, look, so here we go. Bread is ready. We're ready. I'm going right in with oh the meat. Oh my god. You see that? Oh and you see, you see this? that drip too. Like you this see the is drip? a good amount of yeah. Now I got my jardinier mm -hmm. over here. One over. Nestle it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nestle. Look at all that juice coming out. That's gonna get absorbed into the bread. I fold here. I fold here. Oh my god. I give it a roll. So then I slice through. Oh, and my there's God. the bee. I, I'm gonna cry. But look at that steam coming off. Mm. Honestly, mm. <laughs> it's really good. 